Good afternoon, everyone, and thank you for joining us. My name is Lynn Ashton, and I am the Grants Committee Chair of the Honorable Order of Kentucky Colonels. Today, we are excited to host a webinar to review the 2021 grant cycle and application process. We are continually trying to improve our process, and we certainly welcome any feedback. Joining me today is the Executive Director of the Kentucky Colonels, Sherry Kroos, and Eric Patterson, our Grants Administrator. Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon, everyone. To give you an overview on what we will be covering today, we will start by providing a brief history and then we will cover our granting guidelines. After that, Eric will give you a brief overview of the grant software system for any new applicants, and we will wrap up by answering any questions that you may have. As we go through the presentation today, I encourage you to go ahead and ask questions, and we will come back and answer them at the end. You can ask questions by typing them in the Q&A tab on the right side of your screen. I would also like to point out that there is a tab titled handouts to the right of your screen, which has copies of our draft 2021 guidelines, as well as some helpful tips for the grant system. The guidelines available for you to download are still in a draft form and the finalized guidelines will be available when you apply. I recommend downloading and reviewing them as we go through the webinar and as you complete the application. The handouts will go into greater detail than will be shown in our presentation today. Before we get started, I want to let you know uh, that we are reopening the 2021 grant process to all organizations. This past year was unprecedented due to COVID-19, and we shifted our 2020 grant focus to supporting nonprofits that were on the front lines dealing with those impacted by COVID. So again, we will be opening the process to all. I would like to start off with a brief history about the HOKC and about our grants program. The Kentucky Colonels dates back to 1813 when the first Colonel was commissioned. HOKC officially began awarding grants in 1951 and the first year four nonprofits were awarded grants totaling $6,100. Since that time, HOKC has granted out over $53 million. These grant dollars are generated from the generosity of 30,000 colonels in every state and 49 countries who donate to our Good Works program on an annual basis to support nonprofits like yourselves. Currently, we are targeting to grant over $2 million as we strive to reach the goal of granting $5 million annually. In 2020, we have awarded over $2.8 million to 187 organizations across the Commonwealth. This total includes a $1 million gift to the Team Kentucky Fund that was administered by the Community Action Council. As a reminder, HOKC's grant process is a reimbursement process. Let's talk about how to apply. Starting on January 1st, you will be able to access the online grant system to log in or create your account if you are a new applicant. Once you are logged in, you will see the available applications. The first step of the application process is the letter of intent or LOI. It will start by asking you a few eligibility questions and then ask for you to upload your LOI on your letterhead along with a copy of your tax exempt certificate from the IRS. After submission, we will review your LOI and you will receive an email giving you access to complete the application. Next, I would like to go over the 2021 grant cycle timeline with you. As mentioned before, on January 1st, you are eligible to log in and create your account to complete the LOI form. After your LOI is approved, you will see the application in the same area as the LOI. Your application must be submitted online no later than Friday, February 12th at 11.55 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. After being reviewed by Eric and myself, the grants will then be reviewed by our grants committee and then moved on to our trustees for vetting. 
They will be contacting you to set up a site visit to ask you some questions about your application. After all grants are reviewed, the board will vote on the grants in early June. You will be notified by mid-June whether your grant was approved or denied. If your grant is approved, you will have from the date you receive your approval letter until September 30th, 2021, to turn in all receipts and submit all documentation. It is very important to submit your application before the deadline to allow us time to reach out to you for any necessary corrections. If you submit right at the deadline, the internal review will be very limited. And this means that if your application is not entirely correct, your grant request could be negatively impacted. At this time, let's move on to review the 2021 guidelines. Eligibility. You will be asked to answer several eligibility questions when you submit your LOI form. Please take a moment to review the questions listed here. And if you have any questions, please type them now. Ineligible organizations. Please take a moment to review the types of organizations that we do not fund. If you have any questions on whether your organization qualifies for a grant, please type them now or feel free to reach out to Eric after today's webinar. What we fund. Funding is limited to items or projects that can be seen, felt, and touched. Requests for funding from the Kentucky Colonels should be for items and projects that will directly benefit as many of the clients that you serve as possible. What we do not fund. Here is a list of several items that we will not fund. Again, please take a moment to review these limitations and ask any questions. I want to remind you that all of these limitations are explained in greater detail in the guidelines available for you to download. <clears throat> Reporting and reimbursements. Should funds be awarded, you will have until Thursday, September the 30th, 2021, to provide the documentation specific to your grant expenditures to claim your grant funds. The Good Works program is a reimbursement process meaning that you will not receive a check until documentation has been uploaded. All items must be purchased between the date of the grant award, which will be mid-June, and Thursday, September the 30th, 2021. Items that are purchased before notification of the grant award will not be funded and are not eligible for reimbursement. If the deadline for the grant completion cannot be met, the recipient must request and receive an extension via email from the Kentucky Colonels if the funding commitment is to remain in effect. Such requests must be received no later than Tuesday, August 31st, 2021. <clears throat> Please be aware that very few extensions are granted and they require extreme circumstances. For example, in the past, we have granted an extension to an organization who was waiting on a matching federal grant. We do understand that issues may arise, but it does take a significant reason for you to be approved for a grant extension. Advisory information. Matching grants. The Kentucky Colonels will often make partial grants on a matching basis meaning that the applicant must raise the remainder of the amount requested from other sources, including its own. If approved for matching funds, please provide the matching partner when requesting reimbursement. This year, we again have three different application levels, depending upon the amount you are requesting. A small grant application is for any request less than $2,499. A medium grant application is between $2,500 and $9,999, and a large application for grants of $10,000 or greater. <clears throat> Each of these three applications will be available after clicking Apply on your dashboard. 
Please be aware of the application you are filling out and verify that it fits with your request. Completing the wrong application may negatively impact your grant decision. Please reach out to Eric if you would like to verify that you have selected the right application. We highly recommend submitting your application as early as possible to allow us to carefully review your application and inform you of any necessary changes you need to make. Next, I would like to cover the bids that are required depending upon the amount you are requesting. If you are applying for a grant of less than $2,499, then you only need to get one bid per item and you do not have to upload copies of that bid into the system. Although please know that your trustee when vetting may ask to see that bid. If you are requesting between $2,500 and $9,999, you are required to provide two bids per item and are also required to upload copies of those bids into the system. If you are request is for $10,000 or more, you are required to get three bids and all bids must be uploaded. If you are a large multi-hospital system, know that only one hospital is eligible to apply per year. Large multi-hospital systems are defined as any hospital corporation operating five or more facilities within the Commonwealth. Also, please note that large hospital systems are very carefully vetted and are generally not funded. Please reach out to us before applying to determine if your organization will be eligible. If your organization is a part of a large hospital system and awarded a grant, you may not be eligible to receive a grant in the next grant cycle. Recognizing the kernels. Grant recipients are expected to acknowledge the Kentucky kernels. Items such as plaques, decals, vanity license plates will be provided to the recipient by the Kentucky Colonels. Items not provided by the Colonels will need approval from the Colonel's office. Reciprocal PR is appreciated in the form of social media and our newsletters. If approved for a grant, we may reach out to you for information such as pictures, quotes, or other relevant information for the grant received. We have provided a follow-up form through the grant system for you to upload information that is mentioned above. At this time, I'd like to turn the webinar over to our executive director, Sherry Cross. Thank you, Lynn. Let me talk a little bit about the reciprocal PR. As you heard earlier, all of our funding for grants to nonprofits come from individual Kentucky colonels. So we wanna spread the good news about your organization. And we know that Kentucky colonels who are not engaged with the Honorable Order might know your organization and we wanna expand their information and potentially get them on board as a donor to the Kentucky colonels, the Honorable Order. So please be aware of that. Now, Eric will go over the registration process for everyone who has not registered in the past. If you applied last year, then you do not need to stay online for the rest of the webinar unless you would like to stay for questions at the end. Please remember the guidelines are available for you to download are just still a draft. And let me address a couple questions that I've seen come through before I turn it over to Eric to go through the application process and before we lose some nonprofits that are on board. So we've got a question about our libraries and private K through eighth grade schools eligible. They are eligible if you're a 501c3. We have helped both. If you have more specific questions, just call Eric this afternoon or tomorrow morning. Uh, I have a question here about a date prior to February of 26 for eligibility uh, for IRS determination. You would be eligible with that prior to February 16th. And there's a question here in regards to last year or in 2020, you applied for a grant with us. It was put on hold. Yes, you can resubmit that uh, again for 2021. Obviously, you'll need to update the bids for that. Uh, and if you joined us late, uh, let me uh, restate something Lynn said earlier. We are opening up our grant process for 2021 back to all the 
501c3s that we look at, that's cultural institutions can apply this year, historic preservations can apply this year. We certainly appreciate uh, you taking a back step in 2020 for all those food pantries that need help, but the board of directors recognizes that cultural institutions uh, certainly need the help as well. So at this point, uh, Eric, are we ready to start about the registration, the application? Yeah, and I'll just go ahead and cover the, there's one more question there at the top I'll answer before I move on. Um, asking about if both a letter of intent and application need to be submitted between January 1st and February 12th, um, and they do. Um, after you submit your letter of intent, um, I'll reach back out and um, you'll receive an email after it's been approved, usually within a day, um, up to two days and then you'll have until February 12th to complete that application. Okay. And let me follow up. Um, I promise you we will we will get to the application part. We have one more question. It was regards to if your nonprofit received an emergency grant from the Honorable Order to this year in 2020, yes, you certainly can reapply in 2021 for a grant during our cycle. So if uh, anyone is stepping off, thank you for coming on board. Um, as we've said before, please contact Eric. We're here to help any way we can with the nonprofits because you guys are doing the great work that the Commonwealth so desperately needs. So thank you for attending and uh, we'll move on to Eric. Okay. So I'll just kind of go through the, the registration process real quick. Um, the link to this page that is shown here is, will be available on our website, um, or if you have trouble finding it, I, you can always reach out to me and I can give you the link as well. Um, but once you get to this home screen, you can go ahead and click the create new account here. Um, and that'll take you to this first screen where it'll ask you a few brief questions about your organization um, and address and information like that. Um, you can go on and once you click next, um, it'll ask you for a little bit of brief information about yourself um, and then as well as re-entering some uh, basic contact information like your phone number and email and such. Um, after you fill that in, um, you can go on to the next screen. It'll ask you if you are your organization's executive director. Um, if you click no, um, it'll take you to another screen. That is similar to the information you fill out for yourself. You'll just need to fill out the contact information for your executive director um, for us to contact them if needed about their application. Uh, the next, after you can go ahead and click the next step, um, it'll ask you to create a password. And this is important to kind of write down and remember. That way you can log in and either complete your letter of intent application um, or just to check on your application as it moves through the process. Um, after you create your password, um, it'll take you to this screen to make sure you have received a confirmation email that your account has been created successfully. Um, this part is important because we do regularly send updates about your grant um, and about the process, and you want to make sure you're receiving any email communications. Um, after you click uh, that you've received the email, you can go ahead and click the continue button. Um, and at this time, I'm going to go ahead and navigate into the um, online grant system to show you what the letter of intent and application looks like. So bear with me for a few seconds here. As Eric uh, pulls that up, I want, if you all are not aware, we've created a private Facebook swap group for nonprofits in the Commonwealth. Uh, we've had several nonprofits call us where they're needing to donate items. They want to do it through to other nonprofits. So if you have a need out there or uh, you have, if you have a need where you're looking for something, or if you have items you'd like to donate to other nonprofits, reach out to that Facebook page and we could potentially do some swapping with that. Uh, and you can reach out to Eric if you can't find that Facebook page. So, Eric? Okay, so I've gone and got it pulled up. So once you create your account, you'll be taken to a screen that looks similar to this. Um, you'll see at the top here, um, you can click, always click on the home button to get back to the dashboard. And then when you're ready to apply on January 1st, you'll click this apply button here, and it'll take you to a screen um, with all three available applications. Um, that you can choose from. Starting on January 1st, there will be a blue apply button 
that will appear here in the top right of each of these boxes. Um, and again, if you have any questions about if you're filling out the correct application, just feel free to reach out to me and I can verify that you're doing the right one. Um, so after you do click apply, um, it'll take you into a screen that looks like this uh, for you to complete your letter of intent. The first step will just be for you to answer a few of the eligibility questions that we briefly covered earlier. And then it'll also ask you a little bit about your organization and allow you to upload the necessary documents and provide background about your project you're requesting funds for. Um, you can't see it on this screen since we're just previewing it, but there will be a save letter of intent or submit here in the bottom right. Um, and after you do that, I'll receive an email and then I'll review it and get back to you. Um, but after your letter of intent is approved, you'll be able to go back to your dashboard. Um, and you'll see a new line appear below your letter of intent that says edit application. Even if you haven't started your application, it'll still stay edit. Um, you'll go ahead and click on that button and it'll take you to uh, the application screen. Most of the application is similar to um, in past years. Um, I will briefly um, scroll down to show you the grant item request form and provide a little bit more information about that. You'll click here to download the form for you to fill out, um, and it'll download a Excel sheet that looks a little bit like this. Um, allow you to input your items that you're requesting funds for as well as the vendors. For example, if you're requesting a new playground equipment, you'll want to make sure that you're getting a bid from three different vendors and providing their pricing and information as well. Um, after you input all your items, um, you can save it and then go back into the application and you'll have two different upload spots if you need to upload more than one sheet. And then below that, you'll notice that there's a few upload um, links for you to upload the copies of the bids reference on that bit sheet as well. Um, other than that, I'll kind of scroll down here to the bottom of the application. Um, and again, you'll see, not on this screen, but when you're actually completing it, there'll be an option to save it um, and submit it when you're ready as well. Um, the system does have an auto save feature just in case you forget to save it at some point. Um, but then you are able to save it and come back at any time. At this time, I'm going to go ahead and navigate back out of the system and we'll finish answering any questions that you may have. Thank you, Eric. Uh, we do have a few questions. Let me address um, and then talk a little bit about small organizations. So we, you can, again, submit the letter of intent on January 1st. Uh, you can start with that's our first process. And we'll, the first one we'll take is January 1st. And for the smaller nonprofits, uh, we recognize that there's many, many of you that are all volunteers and you don't have executive directors. So the chairman of your board would be considered your executive director. If you are a volunteer with an organization and you've got potentially some older folks or those that are not as computer savvy as some of us have gotten over the course of this COVID, please reach out to Eric because we'll even, if we have to take a paper copy of the grant application, it'll be very rare that we will approve that. Uh, but if you are areas where you don't have reliable internet, uh, please reach out to us. We don't want a nonprofit who is run by volunteers or one or two staff people to be held up with this process if we, if we can help at all point. Please, again, denote it's going to be very rare that we do that, but we will offer that if need be. Uh, there's a question here about grant levels reimbursement. Um, I'm not sure. Uh, I'm, uh, yes, all of our grants are reimbursed this year, reimbursements this year, which is different than 2020. 2020, we cut checks and gave it directly to nonprofits, and then they had to do the reporting structure back to us to prove the money went, which what was approved of. In 2021, it's reimbursement. So, Obviously, that means you will purchase the items that you, that the trustee approved, and then we will write you a check. And all of our programs are like that. Uh, Eric, have you missed any questions? I'm trying to look through here, make sure we covered them all. Yeah, 
Well, this is Lynn. I, I want to add one thing to what Sherry said uh, about the reimbursement and purchasing of items. Uh, once you have submitted the list of items that you want to purchase and you receive the grant, you're, you're notified that you have been accepted. You cannot change those items and decide to purchase something else. If you purchase something other than what you've been permi given permission to purchase through uh, the trustee vetting your grant, then those items will not be reimbursed. So. Okay. Looks like there's one question when the LOI can be submitted. That'll be on January 1st. Um, <clears throat> and there's one that says if they didn't apply last year, is their account still active? Um, and as long as you've applied, um, starting in 2019 is when we switched over to this system. So if you've applied within the last two years, you should have an account that's active for you to log in and continue. Um, we have a question about the location of your organization. It's, do you need to be located in Kentucky or can it come from elsewhere and deliver programs in Kentucky? Yes, your mailing address does not need to be in the Commonwealth but what you're applying for has to be direct services to those that live in the Commonwealth. Uh, USA Cares is a perfect example. We support, uh, have supported in the past that group when it comes to Fort Campbell or Fort Knox. So you just have to have the primary, the recipients have to be Kentuckians. So I hope that answers that question. Uh, the next question is, hang on, I was going to model that will prohibit consecutive grants. Uh, this is a great question. Um, it's regards to consecutive years where the Kentucky colonels have gifted an organization. We did create last year a new model where if a particular nonprofit had gotten multiple grants from honorable order, uh, that they would, we would ask them to sit out one year. Uh, and we did that starting in 2020. However, after lengthy board discussion, because of COVID still, uh, still very much involved with all of us, we are not going to have any, we're not asking any nonprofits to sit out a year this year in 2021. If a nonprofit would like to apply, we certainly will take a look at them. Uh, the in question in regards to advertising for brochures, that does not apply. That uh, that wouldn't be a grant that we would look at. Uh, do we, if I don't see any other questions, Eric, unless I've missed one or two. Uh, there's one that asks if you're an organization's all volunteer ran, who would be considered the executive director. Um, for that, you can just put your, the chair of your board or a volunteer, just someone that would be able to contact about your application when we're in the review process. Okay. Um, and we do have an uh, organization that, uh, Ms. Collins, Eric will reach out to you um, and speak to you about your small nonprofit. Uh, we have a question here about a food kitchen. Uh, yes, yes, you certainly can apply for the items, the same items again. We have a particular nonprofit in the Commonwealth that um, has gotten green beans for many, many years from the Honorable Order of Kentucky Colonels. Um, the question regards to books distributing to the community. Uh, that's a great non, that's a great item to apply for. Uh, let Ms. Hall, let us talk to you about uh, the the bids per book. So we might be able to have you not do several bids for that, for those particular books. So uh, Eric Patterson will reach out to you and try to answer that question. Okay, at this point for, I won't, don't want to hold you all up because I think we've answered all the questions. Uh, Again, the grant application will become available January 1st. The guidelines will go up probably, um, I would imagine maybe the week right after Christmas, something like that. We'll get it up. Check check the week of Christmas and, and the week after the holiday. 
Uh, and again, if you have any questions, email Eric directly at epatterson at kykernels.org, or you can call our office. We're open five days a week, and we do have individuals in the office, uh, socially distanced, mind you, at 502-266-6114. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for coming, and we appreciate all of what you do in your communities, and we will look forward to helping those nonprofits. Have a good afternoon.